our next presenter is Justin Chen. Uh, he is the co-founder of PicFu and serial entrepreneur of 14 years. Uh, he will tell us how testing helps to successfully launch titles. Uh, and I will give him a word now. So please, uh, Justin, you can start. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Justin Chen. Uh, I'm happy to be here at Games Gathering 2020. And I'll be talking about giving gamers what they really want with rapid user testing. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a software entrepreneur based in Los Angeles. I'm co-founder of PicFu. So PicFu is a DIY consumer research platform and we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, so you can reach me at justin at picfu.com or on Twitter uh, if you want to uh, you know, get the slides or anything like that. Uh, I am a casual gamer in my free time. I play games like Clash Royale and Brawl Stars and Badland Brawls. Um, recently, a noob Fortnite player, still trying to learn how to play with my kids. Um, they always beat me, but it's a good way to bond with them. Uh, I have not built video games before, but I do enjoy building tools that help game developers make better games. Uh, so I started my career at HP, um, Hewlett Packard, and I've been doing this entrepreneurship thing for over 15 years with my co-founder. And so PicFu is our latest, um, latest endeavor. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about how everything, you guys know this, but launching a game is hard. And how can you know what users actually want? And then we're going to talk about what is rapid user testing as we define it and how can it help my team's efforts uh, really understand the needs of your target users. So how do you know what gamers want? So as developers today, you have a seemingly infinite number of tools at your disposal that you can use to kind of gauge how your, uh, your customer base is responding to your game. And so we like to think of it in this, uh, in this landscape of tools along two different axes. So the first axis being the kind of data that you receive. So whether it's qualitative or quantitative, so qualitative being why and quantitative being what. And the second axis being who you're uh, gathering that data from. So is it your current users or your target users? So game development has so much data uh, at your disposal, but if it doesn't give you the understanding of what your gamers want, it's it's not really that useful. So let's talk through some of the tools, types of tools that you might use during your development process. So the most obvious ones are the in-game instrumentation uh, tools and app store metrics. These are the most basic ones that anyone would look at. And so these are used to figure out what your downloads are and how long people are spending in your games and how they're progressing and Basically, is, is the game that you've launched resonating uh, with your audience, both from the macro level, just looking at the App Store metrics, and also uh, on the individual level, you can kind of see how people are progressing throughout the game. And so this gives you a lot of a lot of numbers, right? These are the quantitative. This is the quantitative data that tells you if you're if you're succeeding uh, numerically, but. You also need to know why. And so from your current users, you're probably going to be monitoring uh, obviously the app store reviews, but also communities and forums. And these might be your own communities, like your Facebook page, or maybe game forums where people are talking about your game. And this is where you're starting to learn about the reasons why they do or do not like the game that you've already launched. And so when we move up to the uh, this quadrant about target users and quantitative data, we're talking more about app marketplace analytics, maybe ads you're running against, uh, concepts that you're thinking about uh, launching. And so these are things that you're using to project whether or not the type of game that you're gonna launch uh, is going to succeed. And is, is there a, a appetite in the marketplace for such a game? And these are all important numbers uh, as well. But when you want to find out qualitative da data from your target users before you've even launched the, uh, the really the only way to do that now is through things like traditional focus groups, which are available to some larger developers and publishers. But even, even then, those are typically very expensive and very time intensive to conduct. And, and you would only really do those at the end of a development cycle. And so this is where PicFu comes in as a fast and affordable and accessible way to help you get insights from your target users before you launch. 
So to illustrate this, uh, we're going to talk through a case study today. And I'm going to talk through um, one of our recent large publisher customers who uh, will, re will remain nameless for privacy reasons, um, how they turned around a game uh, that they had launched. And so this game developer had a string of hits under their belt already, and they've already grossed over a billion dollars in the App Store in revenue. And so they were working on a new game for over a year. And what had happened is they soft launched it in Russia where it, it massively underperformed in the downloads. And so um, looking at their App Store metrics, they saw that their users weren't biting on this new game. So you know they were trying to figure out what to do now, and that's where PickFu came in. So the three questions that any product manager might ask themselves to understand why their users aren't downloading the game, um, you know, first, uh, are we using the right screenshots? And are they in the right order? Uh, secondarily, is the app icon compelling? And are we using the right character in the icon? Are we showcasing the right character to entice people to, to stop the scrolling and to actually click on our game? And is our description working? And is it emphasizing the most compelling features about the game? And so these are the questions that our publisher client actually ran on PicFu uh, for their character-driven RPG game. So diving into uh, the types of tests that they ran. So the first test that our publisher ran uh, against our panelists was to uh, test the screenshots. And so Instead of showing their actual poll, what we did was we took uh, Brawl Stars, which was a game that that both me and my co-founder are fond of, and we took the screenshots that they have on the App Store, and we ran a poll um, with a very similar question and very similar targeting. And so the question that we used was, are we using the right screenshots, and are they in the right order? And so we posed this question against 50 mobile gamers who spend money on the App Store. So these four screenshots were uh, posed to our panelists. And what happens is we uh, we do a ranked poll. So what, what the respondents have to do is they have to rank one through four in preferential order, all of the options. And so by doing this, instead of just choosing one option, uh, we get a lot more data points to calculate a most preferred winner using an instant runoff scoring system. And so you can see that this poll only cost 210 US dollars and took about an hour and 12 minutes. And not only are you getting quantitative data around the votes, and you can see that option D won, but you also get qualitative uh, written explanation for every single from every single respondent. So if you want to follow along, you can use the QR code um, to see a copy of the slides, and you can also see uh, the full poll results for all the examples that I'm going to walk through. But diving in a little bit into this particular poll, we can see, uh, I pulled out two of the comments here because um, it's a little bit hard to read. So the first comment was from a female age 35 to 44, 30 to 60K US income at a graduate degree. And even though option D1, her comment was about how she liked uh, that <clears throat> option A actually showed all the different aspects of the game. And it showed that it had the, the social aspect and the news and the brawlers and the character looks and all the friends. And so that was really appealing to her as a female gamer. The second comment was interesting from a male 35 to 44, 100K US income and a graduate degree. He actually liked option D because he could actually see the gameplay and that is the one that won. And then he went on to discuss why he ranked the rest of the screens in the way he did, saying that he liked that the second place option C showed the three uh, battlers that he could choose from. So it's this kind of a uh, written qualitative information that's very helpful for your team to understand what the priorities of um, your respondents, uh, uh, your target audience may have for, for a game like this. And so the action that our publisher took was they actually did replace the leading screenshot and reordered the others based on the feedback of the PicFu poll. So the second test that they ran the second question that they were trying to figure out was the app icon. And so for this scenario, they actually ran two types of polls. So the first one was, uh, what character do people prefer? They were trying to figure out just before they get to the app icon, which character should we be showcasing? It is a character-driven RPG after all. And then what is the actual app icon design? So for the purposes of this example, we took the Brawl Stars icon and we ran the question, which app icon 
makes you most want to download and play a mobile 3v3 battle game. <clears throat> so again, we ran the against the audience of 50 mobile gamers with App Store spend, which and it only took an hour and 195 US dollars. <clears throat> And so diving into the comments, uh, first of all, we'll note that option C actually won. I, I believe at the time that we ran this, option B was the, the icon that they were using, but option C won against our panelists, um, followed by option A and then B. And a lot of the comments were actually around the fact that people liked the skull character because the skull character made more sense for a fighting game and it was more interesting than a generic smiley, as you can see from the male age 25 to 34, where he mentioned that he liked it better than, than the generic smiley. And again, with the female age 35 to 44. And so that the action that they took here from the couple polls that they ran testing characters and app, app icons was they actually did change out the character that they featured on the app icon. And this is a really important one, especially for games that have multiple characters that are trying to appeal to different people. Um, you want to choose the character that uh, kind of pops and is going to be the most appealing uh, to people as they're as they're scrolling and as it gets, you know, it may get lost on the home screen. So you want to pick one that really pops. So the third test that they ran was around the descriptions to to figure out what bullet points they should be highlighting more um, on their app store listing. So the question that we ran was. Is our description emphasizing the most compelling features? Um, and we're trying to figure out the ordering of the bullets here. So what we did was we took the four text blurbs from Brawl Stars again, and we put them up here for people to rank preferentially one through four. Uh, again, we targeted 50 mobile gamers with App Store spend, and again, it only took about an hour. And so diving into some of the comments, uh, we'll see that the first comment from a male age 55 to 64, liked that uh, the first bullet showed that you could have fun by yourself or with others, while the second male, 35 to 44, liked the fact that there were constant updates keeping him interested. And he also noted that there are certain aspects that he just wasn't interested in. So the upgrades and the competition, and he just wasn't interested in those aspects of the game. So that's really interesting for your team to know as they're figuring out what to emphasize in advertising and maybe these might even feed into what you put onto your screenshot, right? Because those are also emphasizing different aspects of the game. So what the publisher ended up doing in this case is they did take the feedback from the PickFu poll and they reordered the description bullet points based on the poll ranking results. So to review the changes, they the publisher updated the screenshot order. They changed the character that they were highlighting on the app icon. They reorder the feature descriptions in the App Store description. And after this, they did another soft launch in Vietnam this time, and they did meet their target install metrics. And they proceeded to launch into the US after a few more tweaks that they validated by PicFu. And it, it went very well. It's It's got a 4.3 star rating in the App Store, and they're continuing to iterate on other aspects of the game uh, with PicFu now. So let's talk more about real user feedback and how we can do it in hours and not days to help your team iterate in a daily basis as opposed to days and weeks. So when we talk about rapid user testing, we're uh, comparing that against the more traditional focus groups, which, like I said before, can be very costly, very time consuming, and is usually only accessible to larger developers and publishers who have the resources to conduct these. So by rapid, we're talking about single, simple single question polls. So all of our polls that we ran are all single question. They're not long form, you know, 20 question surveys, very simple to set up and also very simple for our respondents to complete. And that's why they happen so quickly. They're completed in a matter of minutes, not hours, not days, not weeks. And so when you set up a poll on PicFu, within 30 minutes, you can get 50 US respondents to respond and work with your design team to iterate throughout the day. And these are very, uh, it starts very cheap at a dollar per response, a uh, dollar US per response. Uh, the users that we're talking about um, tap into our panel of 10,000 active US consumers who are under non-disclosure agreement, who are paid a small stipend to respond to their poll. So these are not people who are 
trying to consume content either on the web or through apps and having they're not having their content blocked, forcing them to answer these surveys. These are people who are opting in to uh, to do these surveys for a for a fee. And so they are trying to do it as genuinely and honestly as, as possible. And with our uh, audience base, like we do have a lot of demographic information about them. So you were able to target them by very specific uh, gaming demographics and other generic uh, demographics as well. And we'll talk more about that later. And lastly, I want to point out that all of our uh, responses are quality controlled with both human feedback and machine learning algorithms. So every response that comes in is evaluated uh, to figure out if they're genuinely and earnestly responding to the, uh, the polls. And we also have a human editor that's going through and making sure that all the respondents um, uh, should be in there based on their response history. And so when we talk about testing, we, we showcased uh, some of the responses before, but you're not only getting quantitative votes around which one won, but also written explanations from every single respondent. And so you can use our poll format to test anything from images to text, to video, to audio, any aspect of the creative process that you need to get feedback on. All of the poll results are private. Uh, and so even the respondents who answer them don't get to see the, the final responses. They just get to see it at the time of their um, taking the poll. And um, our platform gives you both this quantitative and qualitative insight um, that I'll talk a little bit more about now. Uh, so in the previous screenshots, we saw a little bit about uh, what's in every poll. But I want to emphasize that every poll does include written responses, and it includes demographic reporting of every single respondent. So on the poll result page, you'll actually get a chart breakdown of how all the responses, um, you know, A versus B, like how many males uh, responded to things versus females. And we'll default to things like age and gender and income, but you can request other things like whether they use the uh, iOS or Android or their favorite game genres. And you can use all that demographic information to segment the responses uh, to better understand your target audience. So some of the audiences that we offer, um, obviously we have some of the, demo the most basic demographic traits like gender and ethnicity um, and age, which are all important, but also behavioral traits like which mobile device they're using and whether they do play mobile games or don't play mobile games. Obviously, game genre is super important, whether they spend money on the app store and if they're mid-core or casual gamers. There's other behavioral traits that you may be interested in that are more based on their uh, other lifestyle behavior. So whether they're wine drinkers or what kind of sh things that they buy when they're shopping, depending on the kind of game that you're targeting, those also might be interesting to you. So when in our case study, we talked about how PicFu helped in the launch process. So it helped the marketing team with user acquisition and really fine tuning a game that was already done being made. But where else does PicFu help? So PicFu can actually be used throughout uh, the rest of the game development process. And we see a lot of our larger publishers using it in the pre-production phase and actually testing game name and character concepts from the very beginning. We see them doing competitive analysis to see uh, as they're developing this artwork, how is it gauging against the uh, the games that they're going to go head to head against? And they're testing character development. So if you're going to be uh, competing against other games, are your art styles and your characters going to resonate? During production, you can test things like gameplay variations and UI variations, and in launch and beyond, we talked about app store optimization with some of the tests that we did before, but you can also test things like online and TV advertising. So in the game naming space, you really wanna make sure that your game's name is a draw and not a turnoff. You wanna make sure that it resonates. And I think this is super important, especially for non-US gaming companies who are marketing to US audiences. You wanna make sure that the name, um, if it's a translation or, or anything like that, and you wanna make sure that it resonates and doesn't have any negative cultural implications. So game naming is, is really important to test. And uh, the question that we're showing here from one of our publishers that, that we're redacting the creatives is what name would you 
would make you want to download the game. And what they actually did here is they they took the different name variations and they juxtaposed them on the uh, different um, marketing creatives that they're going to use so that you can see it within the context of, of, of the artwork. And so this one was actually posed against 500 general respondents, US respondents, uh, did take a little bit longer, took 13 hours, but uh, option B was a pretty good uh, resounding winner in this case. So art themes are really interesting to test. Uh, there's a lot of different um, directions that your team can go in, and it's really hard to know what's going to resonate. And so in the example that we're showing here, they're testing uh, the city themed puzzle game against 50 female mobile gamers, 18 to 34. So a very precise audience in this case. And they actually took pretty different uh, artistic directions. Um, We've heard some feedback that developers think that testing art this early could be stifling to creative teams, but we actually think it's the other way around where with PicFu, you actually get more freedom, freedom for your creative teams because you can now explore really different concepts and uh, thematic directions, knowing that you can validate them early with your target market. So I think there, there could be the tendency without testing to take a more conservative approach on the artwork but if you're able to do some validation early on, like like you can with PicFu, you can kind of take wild um, wild directions uh, in in different uh, approaches to see what actually will resonate with your target audience. And the fact that this is a private polling platform is really great because you wouldn't want these kinds of uh, uh, different directions to see the light of day with actual users in public, with your communities or with any ads that you might be uh, thinking about using to validate. Uh, character development is a really popular approach that uh, a lot of our publishers uh, use PicFu for. And so you want to see how the audience receives uh, your character and how they respond to it at the earliest possible stage. And so um, this is really important, especially if you're targeting a game against a general audience and you plan to have characters that you want to appeal to different segments. And perhaps you have one for young males, one for older females, and you wanna see if you're hitting the mark with those, uh, with those audiences on PicFu. Uh, one of my favorites to see is uh, gameplay testing. So you can actually test the gameplay mechanics before committing to uh, production development cost. And so while this isn't, this isn't users playing the game. You, what you can do is you can upload a video of the uh, the gameplay or an animated GIF. And in this case, they were testing which battle formation do you like. And so they used the video to show the different mechanics of the battle formation, testing it against 50 male mobile gamers, 18 to 34. Clearly option C1, hands down. And so um, this is a, a, a really option, a really great way to use PicFu. We also have a case study on our blog where one of our uh, publishers uh, super 80s world did a game where they were testing the running versus walking for the character and they used an animated GIF and it, um, the results were also uh, you know very clear in one direction. So another important aspect of using PicFu is to do competitive analysis. And you can actually do competitive analysis for any of the poll types of uh, things that we've been talking about previously. So you could do competitive analysis for the app icons, choosing yours against uh, uh, your competitors or your entire field of competitors. You can be testing your UI or game flow uh, versus theirs, kind of like in the example we're doing here, um, and even marketing creatives. So you really want to gauge how you stack up against the competition. And this could be early stage uh, as, you're, as you're doing the development of your creatives, or this could be before you go to launch. You may want to just get a gauge before you open it up, how you compare against the competition. Um, and lastly, um, advertising. So obviously we're all the game, all game, all game companies are developing advertising or mobile ads to, to market their games. And you wanna ensure that your advertising is sending the right message and that it's resonating with your audience. So the question that uh, the publisher asked here is what kind of mobile game would you expect to play after clicking on this banner ad? So a neat thing about PicFu is that you can, you can run polls uh, that aren't comparing anything. You can just gather open-ended feedback like this kind of poll. And so they're not necessarily choosing something, but you, what you can do is you could ask them to rate on a scale of one to five, 
and give an open-ended uh, response to it. So it's very interesting for, um, for publishers to see, is the message that I'm trying to, to convey, is that coming through and is that resonating with people? And so this one was targeted against 100 mobile gamers and took 50 minutes and um, really gives you a lot of clarity on what kinds of uh, adjustments you need to make to your creative to make sure that that message that you're trying to you're, you're trying to communicate comes through. So um, that's all I had today. Uh, we did talk through a case study of how one of our publishers, a large publisher, was able to turn around their soft launch how they were able to test their screenshots and their app icons and their description bullets to come up with the optimal set that helped them relaunch into the, a different market and finally into the US market. And we talked about how PickFu provides affordable actionable feedback in hours and not days. Um, how qualitative market feedback helps stack the deck in your favor and how understanding your users is critical before you launch. And I think this is even more important as I said before, if you are a non-US company targeting a US gaming audience and you want to make sure that all of your assets uh, from the name to the creative to, um, to the, the game interactions and, and your ads are resonating correctly with the uh, US culture. Uh, yeah, so that, that's it. You can, you can find the slides uh, again on the QR code or uh, reach out to me with my email. Yeah, Justin, thanks a lot. And I have a question for you. Sure. And does uh, testing, this kind of testing depends on size of game. So for example, from bio game and triple A game, is there a difference or steps are mostly the same? No, I mean, we, we see all kinds of games coming through. We definitely see, uh, you know, huge triple A games coming through and iterating a lot on, on their characters. Um, and we see more casual, hyper casual games testing, um, you know, the same things. And, and it might be more about um, app store optimization, I think, for the more casual games because they're they're more focused on on the installs and and the user acquisition aspect, whereas like the larger games are a little bit more focused on the the art styles and the characters and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And one more question: How often is that kind of um, testing? Take a praise for one project, for example, like every day or for some features once in a month? How, oh, often, how, how, how often are people yeah. testing? Yeah. Yeah, I for mean, I, th I think it depends on the size of the team. I think if there's um, a larger team that has someone who's focused on UX or, um, you know, the product marketing manager, they'll be running uh, more tests kind of throughout the entire year, depending on how many games they have in the pipeline. Um, but otherwise, I would say for a smaller team, it would probably be every few months, kind of like as they come to a decision point, they'll run a few polls just to, to fine tune the decision and then they'll go off and do their work and then they'll come back and, and get feedback, um, kind of like on a every few month cadence. Thanks a lot again. I think uh, we will finish our presentation. If you have more questions, you can add Justin in private messages. Okay, thank you.